good afternoon class welcome to this session of modern organization and management so in our past sessions we have completed with the three main chapters or the first three modules of your subject and let us now begin with the fourth one the decision making now traditionally if you see your uh, functions of management the first one definitely uh, we speak of planning then it follows the organizing then comes your staffing work uh, now speaking about staffing it is that particular work in the organization wherein you try to bring in right kind of people for the right jobs in your organization now according to your syllabus and because of your syllabus we are not having a chance where you, we can speak regarding staffing in detail now that has been entirely skipped here so those who are willing to learn those who want to know more about staffing you can always go through the textbooks that have been sent for you all so those who are really interested please do not skip the staffing part and also once after staffing uh, it has the directing thing so even that is very much important uh, when it comes for your organization Uh, directing is nothing but where the supervisor would be telling his subordinate as to what he has to do where he has to do when he has to do and how is that the work shall be done now all those to these topics are such topics that if you need we can tell it in one single sentence as we just discussed now or you can write a whole book out of it so try expanding your knowledge refer some textbooks or go through the textbooks that has already been sent to you all but one thing you don't do is do not skip all this thing okay now coming up with, we shall speak regarding decision making in detail so now before doing anything now let us speak about something that has happened in reality a true case scenario now this particular case is all regarding the dilemma that pepsi company had so uh, now more details Uh, let us not speak of it let us skip and let us speak only to the point now what happened uh, many years ago was that now there were several reports in newspaper over the net now all this report they surfaced you know stating that syringes and hypodermic needles had been founded in pepsi cans so this was the news uh, you know that was turning all around that uh, manufactured pepsi can it you know contained uh, medical syringes and high hypodermic needles now hypodermic is nothing but uh you know the normal injection if you want to know it in simple the normal injection what you tell that is a hypodermic needle now this particular uh, when this particular news was surfing it was a you know very problematic decision for pepsi executives because the first thing that hit their mind was could needles have been put in pepsi at the canning plants or where that reports was just a hoax 
or to tell it was you know just a unreal fact that was surfing all around now information was unclear and fast changing time was uh, and you know it was unclear and also it was very much fast changing now when uh, one person said something when it passed on to the other he was telling some other thing and when it passed to one more she was telling some other thing so the company really had not control over how things were changing and you know the time was running out of executives hand and they had to find a solution quickly otherwise it would have proved very much bad for the company now clear evidence of danger means recalling the product now a recall would have been very costly and the company would have lost the trust of the customer as the baddest thing of anything but in the executives once after carefully analyzing the facts they were very much you know they very much believed that syringes could not go into unopened cans of pepsi so what they did was instead of going for a recall of the products the executives of the company they went on a massive public relation you know and education campaign now nationwide ad campaigns uh started explaining how impossible it was that you know syringes could have been put into pepsi can- cans at the plants now they also assured that consumers that there had been no injuries and not a single confirmed case of needles found in an unopened can of pepsi now by responding very quickly and openly to public fears pepsi was able to weather the syringe scare crisis with the least damage that could have been possibly made to the company now pepsi managers made the right decision in believing based on you know careful internal analysis that needles could not possibly have been put in the cans of pepsi at the manufacturing plants but then remember one thing however it was a decision that could have backfired at any point of time if the company was unable to convince the consumers that pepsi products were truly safe yes the damage had happened because of a hoax news but then that it was all regarding how well they could come out of it it was all regarding the decisions the executive had to take now if you uh, remember not so long ago the same thing happened with nestle noodles now there were a lot of allegation regarding the lead content in the packets of nestle maggi so the decision they took was that they called back all the product and you all know the story what has happened they had burnt the entire batch but then what was the effect of it there are a lot dimension in which you can see the effects of that particular event uh one is that yes trust of the consumers were lost the second the competitors took very much advantage of that particular scenario the third the only people who suffered was yet again consumers now once after that event the packet which were sold for 10 rupees mrp are now being sold with a hike of 2 more rupees and it is being sold at 12 rupees so the ones who suffers when such a thing happens and if the product is still the leader in the market is none but the customer 
so we are not basically talking about that we were speaking about the decision here the decision was the with the nestle maggi was to call back the product so that they were able to regain the customer trust and after that also they came up with very much emotional ad campaigns where they show us that why it is you know okay to consume this particular product so now speaking about this decision making now in a management and in the process of the management or function of the management now decision making is one of the integral part of the management now in each function you will have to decide uh, let us take into consideration for planning itself now planning is definitely you plan but then there shall be alternative of activities or alternative plans for reaching one particular objective now out of the options that you have when you fix one thing that is nothing but you are deciding that you are going to go along with that particular idea so in the first step of planning itself you are able to say decision now it definitely covers every part of enterprise now in fact whatever a manager does it is nothing but he or she does through decision making only now for example a manager has to decide you know from the beginning itself right from the objectives itself so what are the long term objectives of the organization so once you decide the objective then you have to think of how the job should be structured so once you decide how you are going to do it then you have to come up with the activities or different kind of things where when you will have to decide who shall be doing it and how shall it be done now what strategies should be implemented what policies the organization has to come up with what procedures they have to be adopting how shall be the planning how the job should be structured what type of structure should be there and how to match the jobs that are there with the individuals where we just discussed all regarding that in your our last chapter that is organizing then we speak about how to motivate people how to motivate the personnel in your organization how to motivate the individuals who are working so that they can bring both efficiency and effectiveness in the organization and thereby have to increase their performance or make them reach to that particular position where they can do the best of what they are able to do now which type of leadership should be followed what kind of business is it should the management be authoritarian or it should follow democracy what should it be whether the leader should be such that he takes all the decision and he asks his employees to do it or will he be able to do such a style where he can involve every other individual in the organization now how to integrate effort and you know resolve conflicts what activity should be controlled and if we are controlling how to control them so with all these things one thing that we can notice is decision making is central it is important part of the process of managing the managers are essentially decision makers only now almost everything managers do definitely and undoubtedly involves decision making so in a brief rather than tell a telling brief if i have to speak in a sentence then decision is nothing but a choice from available alternatives that 
we have. So managers, first thing is managers caught for problems. Now make decisions for solving them and monitor the consequences to see whether additional decisions are required or if it is necessary. Now good decision making is always a vital element of good management because Decisions are one which determines how the organization shall solve its problem. How shall an organization be able to allocate its resources and accomplish its goal? But then remember one thing. The same half other functions follow, even decision making is not a easy task. Now always remember one thing, whether be it planning, whether be it decision making or the way you control or the way you organize things, it can become better and better only with your practice and only with your experience. That does not mean that when you do it for the first time, you cannot be successful or that you will be unsuccessful. It is never that. For the first time itself, you can be, you can come up with a very good idea. You can be successful. But even after that, the every time you do, your planning and your decision making only gets better and better because you would be getting experience one after another. Now, it, this decision making, it must always be done along with the ever-changing factor of environment. And not only that, the environment always be unclear information and it shall always be full of conflicting viewpoints. That is, nothing but if manager A thinks plan A is right, then contradicting to that, manager B might think that plan B is good. So that are nothing but conflicting points of view. Now a decision definitely is a choice made from the alternatives that are available. Now decision making is the process by which a individual selects a course of action among several alternatives that are available to produce one single desired result. So this is in brief what we can speak about decision making. Now this is not the end or this is not the only thing that we can speak of decision making. Decision making is a lot more than this. So don't confine yourself to only this part of introduction. As I said, the more the reading you do, the better your knowledge will be. So we shall see some of the characteristics of decision making. How decision making is? What is it? What is it made of? Puff? What are the things does it contain? So the list is exhaustive in nature. It does not end up until Maybe the 6 or 7 that I give, the, the list shall always be, you know, always increasing. It depends upon you, how much you want to know. But some of the important things, yes, definitely we shall discuss. The first one is goal oriented. Now, like all other functions, even this particular function shall be made 
with the purpose of achieving the objective of the organization so with this aim it shall make the process of decision making a goal oriented process that which means to tell that decisions shall be taken with intention of achieving some kind of goals that are to be achieved the next one is regarding the alternatives undoubtedly a decision should always be viewed from the point of view of a point reached in a stream of action in other words or in a simple words to tell it should be considered as one best alternative that has been selected out of 100 alternatives that are available now decision making is you no know, characterized by two main activities the first one is search the second one is choice when we speak of search you know in a business environment the manager always search for opportunities to you know reach the destination for alternative solutions so that whatever had been preplanned a action can be taken on that now this particular thing that we discuss choice it always leads to decision now this choice is nothing but the selection of the course of action needed to solve a particular problem now when there is no choice of action definitely no decision is required that is to tell if there is only one single way of doing a particular activity then yes there is no alternatives hence it does not require any kind of decision making to be done you have only one way of doing it now the need for decision making arises only when some uncertainty with regarding to the outcome exists now as we discussed along uh, we spoke something regarding this choice making so what is this decision making uh, right now we are discussing regarding decision making and in between that we have this choice making so what is it so choice making now if we have to give a definition now it refers to a narrow set of activities which can be connected with choosing one option from a set of already identified alternatives that is to tell you'll have to have breakfast in the morning you have five alternatives you have to pick one among that so that is choice making but then when you pick that that is what you have done decision you have decided that you shall act on it the next one is regarding analytical intellectual so what is this analytical intellectual now can anybody guess or uh, should i give a minute or two where you can decide what is this analytical what is this intellectual now this tells that 
decision making is not entirely a intellectual process it is not entirely subjective in nature it is both intuitive and also deductive now intuitive is nothing but it is based on your feelings it is based on your perception deductive means it shall be based on the inference of you know particular instance from the general law, uh, law that shall be there on the subject or the logic behind it now this decision making it always contains conscious and unconscious aspect also now that is to tell part of decision making can be learned but part of it shall always depend upon the personal characteristic of decision maker mm. now this can be put up very well with a example imagine that you have you know 5 crores of rupees now 5 uh, crores of rupees you have and you can invest in the stock market uh sorry then telling stock market let us consider you can invest it over different asset class now assets you have equity you have preference you have debt you have commodity market uh, you have a gold market you have real estate you have cryptocurrencies you can invest on anything now you will have to decide where that you have to invest it now here you can speak about the characteristics of decision making or the decision maker why does it becomes important when we take any kind of decision now with the taken example if you are a person uh with a characteristic that you can manage with taking risk then definitely you will be going to invest that amount in the equity where for the highest risk that you take there are chances that you might get high returns but then you are a moderate risk taker maybe you are willing to invest in such a asset class which yes definitely gives you better returns but then yes some kind of security is there for your investment also maybe gold you go with but then if at all you are such a person with a characteristic where you are entirely a risk averse then definitely you will see some kind of government bonds or the fixed deposit to be the best option available for investing your amount so that is where the characteristic of decision maker plays its role in deciding something the same thing happens within your organization now there might be a lot of opportunities available in the environment but it depends upon the manager his characteristic how much is he willing to take the risk definitely if he has the ability to take the risk and if he has confidence that he can manage the risk then he would be willing to invest a lot in that risk avenue and make it a very well opportunity for the organization but then if he is a person who wants to avoid all the kind of risk maybe then he would like to go with the flow all that he would need is that if the company survives he might think that is well enough that is fair enough nothing more than that the company needs so decision making cannot be completely you know quantified either now if not is it based mainly on reason or intuition or intuitions now many decisions most of the times shall be based on emotions or instincts now a decision always represents a judgment or a final resolution of conflict of needs means or goals and a commitment to action made in the face of uncertainty complexity and even 
irrationality. Now, when we tell a decision, decision always implies freedom to the decision maker regarding the final choice. Now, it is uniquely human and is the product of deliberation, evaluation and thought. So, this is all regarding analytical, intellectual, said in very, very detailed manner. Now, the next one is decision making. It shall always be a dynamic process. Now, this decision making is always characterized as a process rather than telling it as one static entity. Now, it is a process of using inputs effectively in the solution of selected problems and the creation of outputs that have utility. Moreover, it is the process concerned with identifying worthwhile things to do in a ever-changing environment. Now, that is to tell, now let us take an example of selecting somebody into the company. Now, why does this decision make, have, you know, has to be dynamic? Or uh, why is that we discussed that decision making is, you know, according to the environment. Now, now if it has been written in the book or it has been stated or unstated, it is for sure that when it comes to hiring purpose, yes, most of the company goes in for hiring purpose by giving some kind of test, taking some kind of interviews, you know, merely on uh, merit basis but then there are also chances that sometimes the organization might pick up candidates wherein they might have been recommended by an influential party which the organization might not be able to deny so depending upon the what situation asks for you know what is best for the company managers would be taking such decision So, you cannot always be static when you have to decide. It shall always depend upon the environment or with the context in which it is happening. Now, the next one is pervasive function. So, what is this pervasive function? Now, pervasive function is nothing but it speaks about something which covers everything. That is what makes something pervasive in nature. Now, decision making permits all management and covers every part of the enterprise or your business organization. Now, to tell this, it goes without telling that whatever a manager does, he or she, they do it only by deciding or they do it only by the process of decision making. Because the end process of any manager is our decisions and actions. Now, decision making is the substance of anyone who has to decide. The next thing definitely the fact that decision making is continuous in nature. It is not that you decide once, it is done there. Once you take decision, you act on it, then again you have to decide on it. Now, the life of the manager is a perpetual choice making activity. 
now he or she has to decide things on a continuous basis and on a regular basis also it is never a one shot deal you decide something so that particular work is done then the next one arises then again there are alternatives you have to decide it now it is a cycle it is continuous it is regular and nobody can run away from that now one more characteristic is it calls commitment of few things in the organization it calls for commitment of time effort and money now the commitment can be of short term long term and this all depends upon the type of decision uh when we had to discuss regarding planning we had discussed regarding the strategic tactical and operating and few other thing so that is what speaks about whether something is of short term or whether something is of long term now once something has been decided then the organization has to move in a specific direction in order to achieve all those things the next one is it goes without telling that the decision making is human and also a social process because it includes intellectual abilities the institu- institutions of a individual and the judgment that has been done by him or her now the human as well as social imparts of a decision is usually taken into account while making the choice from several alternatives now for example in a labor surplus or a capital hungry country like that of us managers can you know they will never be able to shut down the plants suddenly now low of divisions and extend the golden handshake to thousand of workers in the face of intense competition and last but not the least speaking of the characteristics decision making is always an integral part of planning now this can also be said with the help of the definition by one of the management thinker nuts he tells decision making is the core of planning now both are intellectual process the one follows the other the one has to be followed by the other and the one complements the other now demanding discretion and judgment now both aim at achieving goals both are situational in nature and both of this involves choice making among alternatives that are available now both of them shall depend on forecasts and assumptions about you know the future the risk that is present and when we speak about risk undoubtedly it follows uncertainty because uncertainty is there there shall be a risk that has to be take so these are some of the characteristics of decision making oh before we go for with the type of decision uh we spoke regarding choice making so we shall once again in the way of definition we shall see the difference between the choice making and decision making now if we have to theoretically you know draw a line for these two as i said earlier choice making refers to narrow set of activities associated with choosing one option from a set of already identified alternatives and decision making now it is the process by which individual select a course of action among several alternatives to produce a desired result although it sounds same 
may be they are similar in nature yes but then do not go to break your head it is fine if you know what it is that is more than enough choice decision choice you have that is tell you do that that is also good you do this that is also good that is choice making no no much of uh impact will be it having if you take either first one or second one but when it is decision making you will be choosing the best among all the available so maybe compared to the best the next best can be better but never the best so that is decision making so we shall see the types of decisions now speaking about types of decision the quality of decision making skill is one of the important factors when a manager want himself or herself to be successful now these manager they shall always be assessed or evaluated by the decisions they make or uh, rather than telling decisions may they make we can tell that they shall always be assessed from the results that we can get by the decisions that they make so it would be useful to you know differentiate between decision made by managers at different levels of management in the organization now um for the theoretical purpose now uh, we can divide the decisions into the first one where we make the most basic kind of decisions and some decisions which are to be made on a routine basis or day to day basis the second one we shall see from the point of view of personal decisions of the individuals in the organization as against that of the organizational decisions that they have to make and the last one we shall see it on the basis of programmed and unprogrammed decisions so th- the third one is programmed and unprogrammed decisions now speaking about this basic decisions now these are decisions you know which uh needs unique problems or which creates unique problems or which needs different solutions now these basic decisions most of the times they shall be one time decision which demands you know large investment from the side of the company uh if we have to give a example maybe the decisions about you know launching a new product or the fact that the company has to buy you know more advanced technology machine or any other kind of non routine decision now such a decision always calls for creativeness good judgment and a very good intuition from the part of manager now a basic decision shall always be some kind of strategic decision which most of the time affects the future of organization now anyone who is a manager in the organization at one point or the other has to take some strategic decision and the higher he is in the level of management hierarchy the more of the strategic decisions that he has to make that is to tell the higher position you have in the organization 
the number of the decisions that you have to make definitely increases so in a brief or in brief if i have to tell regarding basic decision they those are such decisions which are unique one time decision demanding large investment which requires creativeness and good judgment on the part of manager so as against to that we have routine decisions now on the other hand this routine decisions as the name suggests it is routine in nature or repetitive in nature now definitely all such decisions will be requiring little deliberation and most of the times are generally concerned with short term requirements now usually these routine decisions they tend to have you know only few minor effects on the welfare of the organization the day to day decisions may be like the stock is you know finishing off it has to be brought or any other day to day activities with the stationery uh, with anything other which is routine in nature now generally lower level managers they look for you know look after such decision such mechanical or operating decision now that is to tell a supervisor can decide you know whether employee's absence is excused is excused or unexcused now on the personal policy guidelines that he has usually standard procedures are you know established to decide of such repetitive problems quickly that is to tell you have a benchmark now if you are absent for more than 5 days maybe some serious action shall be taken on you so usually for such things where in which you have to take decision on a routine basis definitely a policy a procedure shall be there so if i have to speak regarding the definition the routine decisions they are repetitive in nature requires little deliberation and are generally concerned with short term commitment so this is all about basic and routine decision now they are not one in the same the both are two different things they are uh, the two ends of a skill basics are something which are not repetitive one shall be different from the other routine decisions are which has to be taken on a daily basis or which are repetitive in nature okay the next one is personal versus organizational decision now here let us take the view point of one of the management thinker bernard now according to him this decisions it can be divided on the basis of the environment in which the decisions are to be made now uh, you know decisions to uh, surf the internet to study or to retire early are definitely some of the example for a individual's decision or a personal decision now such decisions pertain to managers as individual now all such decisions all such personal decision uh, you know individual takes or here in this con- context manager takes as a individual they affect the organization in a very indirect way that is to tell you know a personal decision to purchase you know a sedan class car rather than that of you know maybe sports car indirectly helps one firm due to the sale and hurts another because of the lost sale now the sudden decision you know of a popular singer to seek premature retirement may affect the film industry very badly so 
these two example are nothing but in other words you know personal decisions can have impact beyond the immediate system on whose behalf they were made now i as a singer i decided i shall be retiring i shall be directly affected that there is no income for me from that side but then there are lot of things attached with my goals also there are lot more people who would be earning because of me they shall be affected indirectly so in our organization the personal decision of a manager especially we are trying to speak their decisions shall impact organization in a indirect way so that is regarding the personal decision of a manager now organizational decision are made by manager you know when it comes for their official or formal capacity as you know controllers or allocators of organization resources now unless or unlike the personal decision these organizational decision they can always be delegated to others now these decisions they shall be having the aim at you know furthering the interests of the organizations now managers operate in an open environment which is ever changing which is dynamic in nature and the management has to be flexible with it and the result of their decision are always open for the public now when i tell public it includes all the stakeholders the sub, uh, stakeholders uh, are uh, the ones who have interest in the company maybe the subordinates the customers or the general public or the government anything now and such results are generally measured in terms of the firm's earnings now welfare of the employees and also the economic health of the community or to put it in other words managerial decisions will have impact on greater number of people unless like the personal decisions so in order to survive and progress in the economy or in the industry managers are always forced to make professional decisions to make decisions that are based on rationality judgment and experience so here we can take the point of view of one more management thinker thinker levitt and he tells that the manager is judged not for what he knows about the work that is done in his field but by how well he actually does the work now having said that in order to protect the long term interests of the organization sometimes a manager may be forced to adopt certain decisions which might be actually against his personal choice uh, that is to tell a manager who abhors unethical practice may tolerate deceptive products message in company advertisement to ward off competitive pressures sometimes now to survive the manager must be a professional decision maker rather than personal decision maker now he will always be expected to you know resolve or to come up with solution for the conflicts that takes place between organizational and personal decision in a very very smooth way so that is all regarding personal versus organizational decision now if i have to tell it in brief organized organizational decision are ones now these decisions are made by managers in their official or formal capacity they are aimed at furthering the interest of the organization whereas personal decision these are decisions to watch you know maybe things like to watch television to study or retire early are example of personal decision 
now such decisions are taken by managers in their individual capacity and this cannot be delegated and the thing is that personal decision shall always affect the organization in a indirect way so there is one more programmed and unprogrammed decision we shall have a discussion regarding that in our next session so that's it for this session thank you class for your patience listening hope you shall have a happy learning